All right, now we're live. <laughs> Every time before we go live, I say, everybody quiet for a sec. Does it ever happen? Not once. Not you told me to fucking shut up. once. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Robbie? What's going on, Beastly? I'm happy to see you guys. How you guys week been? I, I, it was awesome. I, I can't do English, so how's your week been? <laughs> everybody, okay everything's been going good, yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. It's been uh, one of those exciting weeks for me. I, I got minimal gaming in. Uh, I, I did get my 4K TV, which you guys see behind me. I can me. see that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to upgrade that webcam so we can see now. it in 4K. God damn. No. <laughs> <laughs> the TV cost enough. I upgraded uh, my studio. I got a 60-inch LG. Webcam. Yeah. 60-inch uh, LG UH7700, which is 4K with HDR. It uh -huh. actually I, – I downloaded the latest update for the TV – it actually includes now a, a, a HDR game mode. So when oh, you nice. play video games in 4K, latency? yeah, it has none, man. It That's is cool. insane. That's and great. So I've really been enjoying that and, and really playing some of these more modern PS4 games like Rise of the Tomb Raider, just seeing how incredible these games look yeah. in actual true 4K. Because I've never really, when I, you know, before I actually buy something, I don't like to go to the store and see it. To get myself excited because you may or may not be able to just buy it right then. I'm a guy who acts on impulse. And so uh, if I can't go to the store and buy like a new 60, 70 inch TV right now, I don't want to see it. I don't want to go there, get my mouth all watered for a TV and then have to come back and watch 1080p. And so when it was time for me to finally do it, that's when I really got heavily indulged. And I've really been enjoying it. It's also been a very busy week. A weekend for my house. I've got no gameplay done this week. Had a surprise family member. Uh, fly in uh, to Georgia on Friday and uh, surprise my wife. Yeah. Yo, I'm the exact opposite of you, Beastly. Is when I decide, okay, like when the, the thought comes into my head, you know, maybe it's time to upgrade to 4K, there's going to be around 40 to 80 hours of research into, and this could be less than a TV, right? This could be, okay, cables, right? What cables do I need? <laughs> I use full cables out of notebooks. <laughs> What cables yeah, right do I need so that I have optimal, like the optimal experience going from my soundboard to my stereo, right? It's like, well, yeah. that's going to be, uh, maybe I can go get them at, you know, a musician store. Maybe I can order them online. Maybe I can get them from mono price. What, you know, what do I really need? How much shielding on these cables do I need? How much do I really need to spend on these cables? We're looking at mm, five to 10 hours of research for a set of $12 cables. <laughs> <laughs> for something like a TV, man, I will spend months and I will wait years t till they actually make the product that I actually want. <laughs> because that's, I mean, I, that's how picky I am. So I'll go to Best Buy and I'll look at the TVs and be like, well, this one's pretty nice, but oh God, this remote. How can you even fucking use this remote? Fuck this TV. <laughs> Well, in, in this situation, I'm very, uh, you know, lucky that the website Artings had done a lot of research yeah. uh, on, on a lot of these PS4 Pro and 4K TVs. And, you know, they've done lots of research as far as the, the latency and, and input lag situations, as well as picture quality, uh, the color. I mean, it's just a lot of research has gone into this website as far as these TVs. And this TV got a really high review. I just went through there. I spent maybe two hours. Not 40, but <laughs> about two, looking at research that is already sound research on yeah. these TVs. And, uh, I happened to find someone with a TV that was very, very highly rated on our teams for PS4 and PS4 Pro. And so I, you know, I took a stab at it. And I'm, I'm very, very pleased with what I picked yeah. up. Very Another happy. thing I can't TV. stand is uh, like uh, reviews on Amazon, like user reviews, because you got two kinds of people in there. Either their product arrived broken and they're pissed about it. Or they had some kind of bad customer service, so they got zero stars or one star on the review. Or you got uh, everybody yeah. else who's just so afraid mm -hmm. of feeling buyer's remorse that they all form this collective of people who are like, this is the best fucking TV ever. Uh, <laughs> like, absolutely right. Hey, yeah. You have zero ground to stand on because you own one TV. <laughs> right? Like, so Amazon, it's so hard to find, like, really professional reviews. Cena, I, I felt, used to do a good job. And like the art artings that you were talking about, RTings or whatever it's called, that yep. seems to be a good place too. But man, it's, it can be tough when you're like looking for, especially when you're looking for like um, to use something in a way that not everybody's going to use it. Like a lot of people are going to buy a TV, a 4K TV, to watch Blu-rays and and you know Amazon Video or 
or Netflix on like 4K content, but not everybody's going to want to hook up a you know PS4 Pro, right? There's not that many people with a PS4 Pro, and there's not yeah. many people with a 4K TV, and like the small convergence of how many people who are actually eloquent and smart enough to write a good review on like using those two things together and the experience that you're going to get is very small. So it's like mm -hmm. it's a, it's tough out there. And then. Well, maybe I want to hook up a gaming PC to this thing. Well, how's it work with that? And then, like, oh, nobody God, fucking did that yet. So, like, <laughs> then you're on, then you're in some fucking forum somewhere talking to this dude who's like half English, half you know, like he's speaking through Google Translator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not that I've ever been there before. I mean, this is just yeah, it sounds like oh, yeah. totally out of an experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how many you're hours talking, did you spend with this Swedish man who was telling you about this? I'll tell you, uh, I mean, I've looked at 4K TVs a lot in in the past, and like I've kind of like I really want those one of the OLED ones because I'm replacing a plasma down in my in my living room, and I've always really liked the the way the plasma has the contrast, and I've never been happy with the the picture of an LCD. Even though I heard on 4K the LCD picture has gotten a lot better because of the 4K and some of the newer technologies. Um, so, but the problem is. From everything I hear with the OLED is that the latency is there and it's kind of hard to get past um, and there's some other issues with them. So I'm like, oh my God, it might just be time to just hold off and like, you know, Panasonic is going to start coming out with OLEDs and it may, it may be just a good time to wait for me. Yeah, I mean, it is, you know, kind of treacherous waters, I guess, depending on, you know, what you're looking for, especially if it's new technology. I just feel like, you know, I... I'm surrounded by people in the know. Uh, believe it or not, my older brother, Joe, has always been a TV buff. He knows about the best TVs. He owns one of the best TVs. And he was, you know, over the last few months asking me which TV I should get. And uh, he was sending me links to certain TVs that work really well on the PS4 Pro because he did lots of research because before he bought his PS4 Pro, the last game system he had was like the Nintendo. And so uh, <laughs> he did tons of... Joe sucks. I'm telling you now, he used to come over and borrow uh, Joe sounds like TV. he's got shit together. You're going for yeah, Indo well, advice for TV. Yeah, well, I mean, he's always, I said TVs. <laughs> he's great at TVs and cell phones, but he sent me links and, and, you know, talked to me about it quite a bit. And of course, you're the other person I can go to and ask questions like I did pre show about 4K uh, capture cards. You know a lot about this stuff. And on top of that, the RTings link that you sent me, I believe, last week or the week before, really helped me out quite a bit when it came to, to, to finding the TV that I was going to get and nailing down the pros and the cons of it. And um, yeah, I'm very, very uh, pleased with it. I think it's going to, to serve a great purpose. I'm still kind of in a dilemma mode because I have two 60 inches in the house now. There's one in the living room mounted on the wall mm -hmm. that plays regular 1080p content, yep. you know, nice sound bar and stuff. And that's really where the family sits and watches TV. Right. This one plays 4K content. And I'm yeah. greedy as hell. I don't want to take it and put it in the living room because I, I feel like somehow my studio needs to have the best TV. But uh, is that just me being a, a bastard? Do I need to suck it up and take it and, and mount it? No, in the man. You got to move into the world of 4K content creation, and this is the first step. This is a right. business purchase. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Uh, hey, man. That's all I need to hear. You know, I had to, I had to come to you for advice, and that's exactly. Have you watched what any 4K content on it? I'm curious. Yes. What have you watched? I watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh, where, where'd you get it? I streamed it. Streamed, streamed it. it off of what? Uh, is it v Voodoo? Uh, the, the stream. It, it's a stream. It's a streaming app on the TV. Well, my wife was in oh, here okay. watching. Uh, you mean Hulu? But, no, it's not Hulu. It's definitely okay. not Hulu. I but, don't know. Look good. My God, I've never seen anything like it, Brian. Yeah. Um, and that was the thing. that She screamed. I'm in the kitchen getting some of the drink. She screamed, babe, get the hell in here. What the hell is this? The picture quality is so much crisper and cleaner than we've ever seen. And I remember when 1080p first came out. Oh, yeah. It was unbelievable back oh, then. Oh, that was and now, amazing. Yeah. And this 4K and, and watching films with HDR, it just it blows your mind. I, like I said, I've never gone into a Best Buy and looked at any of these new 4K, 8K TVs, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't want to go there and be like, oh my god, my TV at home sucks ass. Yeah, the first time That's... I had an experience with 4K was uh, my dad actually got one, uh, and at the time, the only way to get content on the thing is he had this Sony server. It was like this, basically, it was like this circular computer that was like I don't know, yay high and like this this wide around, right? Oh. It was a circular thing that had to be hooked up to the internet, and you had to buy movies off of that thing. 
and it How would download was the movies to the hard drive inside the the little server, and that was hooked up through HDMI. This was only two years ago. Really? That was hooked up through HDMI to the 4K TV, and that was like the only way to get 4K TV. It also had that server had also had Netflix, and there was some Netflix content available, but very little in 4K. I think um, uh, House of Cards was big. Yeah, there's a couple of movies. Um, but he showed me a couple of things. He showed me House of Cards, and he showed me Spider Man, one of the newer Spider Man movies that was he had purchased in 4K, and what. What was stunning to me about Spider-Man was that not only could you see his, um, like the ribbing, like the spider web outline of his, of his uh, uh, uniform, but you could see what kind of material it was made out of. You know? like, <laughs> oh like, damn! Yeah, it was really, it was really good. Um, I, but it didn't reason- have the contrast of a plasma TV. It still was that kind of uniform. I don't know how to explain it. That that look of an LCD TV, you know. It was but extremely was crisp. Ago. Yeah, well, we watched some 4K Netflix. My computer, for some reason, Netflix doesn't allow certain you know uh, streaming devices to play in 4K. Even though I have a 4K yeah, computer, yeah, computers they it, they're restricted. They don't want um, that 4K content getting recorded, so they don't let computers stream 4K oh, content. Oh wow. So, I mean, I bought, you know, a long time ago. As soon as I got this computer, I upgraded my Netflix to 4K. Never went back on it. And so I've never been able to stream in 4K, but we've been streaming a hell of a lot of stuff on Netflix in 4K. And my from your God. computer or from the TV itself? The from the TV. TV has a built-in app. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it just, man, it makes a hell of a lot of difference. Boy, 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 my studio is ballerific. I love it. That's nice, man. Uh, ballerific. Yes, I'm going to spend a lot of term. time doing amazing things in this studio. That's awesome. You, you worked hard. You earned it, man. I'm really happy for you. It's going to be a lot of fun while you set that up and you know, get the get all that cool stuff in there. It's going to be a lot I of got fun. My, I got my lights mounted in the ceiling, Briar. Hell I'm yeah. feeling fucking great. I That's mean, nice. all I need is a stripper pole. You guys wait for that video. It's going to... Oh, I got an extra one. This I got one right... Never mind. <laughs> Can I have one, too? <laughs> Everybody gets... Everybody it doesn't gets come with a stripper, Robbie. It's just the pole. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought it wouldn't come with a stripper. Look, it's a really okay, good workout. Mind. I was, I lost like ten pounds. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you, you know that thing? You oh, just burn oh, calories. Got gotcha. my, only, my only question, Brian, did you record any of this workout? <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that's, that's your that's your viral YouTube video somewhere? right there. Is it a private video? Can I check it out? <laughs> my God. So, um. What we normally do on a BC Thought Show is talk about what we've been playing. Uh-huh. Not stripper poles, apparently. Yeah, but 4K, I don't know, man. I get distracted by technology sometimes. And the I fact that this. you finally got a 4K, it's been it's fun to talk about a little bit. And I mean, and it's so big. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I'm used to having big stuff. Uh-huh. But yeah, how big? Read our uh, chat, guys. Oh my god, not, not 60 <laughs> inches, but it's 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 pretty big. But this TV is just amazing, man. It's really the centerpiece of my 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 entertainment hub now. Yeah. You know, up until now, it's always been that TV or the PS4 Pro, but this TV does it all. And it has voice commands. I can just tell it to turn off and it'll turn off and or go to my website, which is on right now, beastlygamer.com. Check it out, guys. Um, but it's just really, really incredible. I love this television. It's amazing. So before the show, you asked me a little bit about 4K capture, which I've been looking at, too. And uh, it's an expensive process right now, right? It's like the... The goal is content creators, people who want to make video, make content for YouTube, especially YouTube, because Twitch, even streaming at 1080 is kind of hard. Like 720 yeah. is pretty much the norm. The 4K content on Twitch is a long time away, I would say, at this point, unless mm. they really up. Anyway, on YouTube, if you're making YouTube videos, 4K is like, I mean, I want to start making 4K content. And there's a couple of devices out there, but until you start recording at 4K, you can't play at 4K. Mm-hmm. That fucking sucks. So what are you up to now? <laughs> like, cause Rip. right, you wanna like you wanna get into some Last of Us. Last of Us has a 4K mode. It sure does. But are you recording? Like, you want to be able to record? You want to put say, that video on your YouTube channel, but you can't play it in 4K because you can't record it at 4K. Oh it's, damn! It's Check it out. Man. <laughs> when I first turned this thing on, I I didn't uh, download the update for it. And originally, this TV was lauded by uh, you know the purchasers of it because of its latency. It had m- really horrible lag, you know, and latency issues with input lag. And uh, so, LG came out with an uh, update specifically for people with 4K consoles and people who play video games. Yeah. That introduced all these new modes, cracked down 10 milliseconds off the regular 1080p mode uh, latency, and 
like 20 milliseconds off the 4K and even added, like I said before, the HDR game mode. And so when I, I went through all the rigmarole, updating the TV, and when I finally got it to work, I plugged my PS4 Pro in, turned on The Last of Us, of course, and a big message popped up and said, you are playing in 4K. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, my God. I, I mean, I feel like crying, man. And of the course, future. playing it. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I finally turned it on and I, and I played it and it was really, really amazing. But the, you're right. Uh, a big thing that's very depressing to me is I can play Tomb Raider, Rise of Tomb Raider. I can play The Last of Us and I'm going to play yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn in mm-hmm. 4K, but I can't, yeah, oh I can't record it. It sucks. I mean, that's <laughs> the thing, right? I was talking to you. Know, my wife was in here. She's like, there has to be a way for you to do it. And I was like, there is. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's not the way I can do it's it. It's not right? cheap. Well, you got to pay, yeah. though. <laughs> You've got to that's pay to pull. play for See, that's where this comes in handy. You need that well, stripper see, pool. That'll for, bring you some dough. <laughs> you're right, Robbie. I'm going to get Briar. And Gary you know, Diaz in chat said he would pay good money to see a video of you on the stripper pool. Well, not what if kidding. We, what if we he all strip that together? That. That'll be a viral video. We're going to have, have one strong-ass stripper pool if all three of us are getting on that <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna have to hold a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, that, that pole is coming down, right? It's coming yeah, right. down. But um, great video, though. For, yeah. for me, in order to to, uh, to upload or record in 4K, I'd have to actually buy a desktop. I'd have to buy a desktop that's powerful enough to actually do things. I yeah. have to buy the uh, capture card that actually goes with the desktop, and and then by that time, Elgato or Aver Media is going to come out with a 4K capture card for 250. Well, have you oh. seen? Have you guys seen any of the news coming out of AMD right now? No, what's that? no? Oh my God, this is like, in my opinion, the biggest news of the week as far as gamers go. If you like PC Ooh. gaming, this is huge. AMD uh, just, I think, on the twenty. I don't know about the date, but I think these things are basically available, or at least to pre-order, if not available now. They just released a whole new line of CPUs for desktop computers, Ooh. and what these things are looking like, they do. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any uh, benchmarks in the hands of like reviewers yet, but the benchmarks they showed uh, at their reveal event, they are as powerful as like high-end enthusiast class Intel processors. Mm-hmm. But they're at like half the price. What? Yeah. So like, I'm not talking about a 7700K here. Like, a br- I'm talking about like eight core processors. Like these things R- are motherfuckers, man. Oh, <laughs> like, fuck. yeah, that sounds, yeah. like shit. That sounds oh. exciting. Like, the top of the line, I think, was an eight core running at like four gigahertz and like with plenty of overclocking what? room. Yeah. Um, that's and it, that's $500 for that. Whereas Intel for a similar uh, chip is charging like thirteen hundred. So, so what are their plans? Oh. I mean, the plan is release these things and say, "Fuck you, Intel." <laughs> like, well, here's just... the problem. All right, for a gamer, for a PC gamer, uh, Intel has been releasing new processors like every year or so, uh, like the forty-seven ninety, the sixty-seven hundred K, the seventy-seven hundred K. But if yep. you look at these. Um, over time, like the performance has not really gone up. The processor that's in my Macintosh, in my iMac, is essentially the same speed as the processor that I bought in my brand new PC, uh, and the price hasn't gone down on these newer processors, right? It's essentially the same speed. It's like a, I think it's like 200 megahertz faster than the the old one. Really? Um, because Intel has basically had a like a clampdown on this market. Nobody can compete. Nobody has been in the market to compete. If you want a desktop processor, you've gone to Intel, right? But AMD is coming out with processors that are really fucking good and cost like half the price of the Intel processors. And they're out like right now. Like they are coming out right now. They've also got new video cards that are coming out like within the next couple of months that are going to be very competitive with what NVIDIA is selling. So it's a... And people are expecting them to do the same thing with those graphics cards and say, you know, this is as Half powerful price. as a 1080, but it costs less money. So they are really disrupting the market. Intel Ooh. has already announced price drops for their processors. Um, so this is really exciting to be a it, it's a really exciting time to be a uh, PC gamer uh, or somebody who's just like, you know, it'd be nice to jump into PC gaming because it looks like fun. Well, this is great because. Everything's going to get cheaper right now. <laughs> Everything and more powerful. Wow. 
Yeah. That, that's incredible news. It's yeah, like, so AMD is just, you know, AMD's been on the, kind of the their back foot for a long time. You know, they've been punch drunk because Intel just kind of, you know, overpowered them. And for a long time, for it feels like four or five years, Intel's just kind of had a monopoly on the desktop PC market, especially enthusiast grade. Mm -hmm. Gamers. But now AMD has really strong offerings with their Ryzen line of processors at extraordinarily competitive prices. So good that it's really going to cause Intel to have to... It's going to disrupt the market. It's going oh, to huge. change it's everything. Huge. Yeah, it's going to make... This is earth-shattering. It is. It's PC big, world. big news. So and it's I'm a really sure good time. Intel is really quaking in their boots because everything has Intel inside, you know, yeah. and, and everybody is buying Intel. And if you can go to AMD and get, you know, something equivalent or, or better at half the price, yeah. Intel is going to, they're going to drop those, those prices are going to just drop down to the fucking bottom. For sure. Just to one, keep of the, the competition. one of the, one of the benchmarks they showed is a, uh, Intel's newest CPU, the 7700K, right? Running a um, stream of uh, Dota, Dota 2, right? So it, the, it basically had Dota running and then OBS streaming it out to Twitch, right? Very common activity. Mm -hmm. And it was dropping frames. I think they said there was dropping between 15, 20, 15 and 20% of frames on a brand new 7700K. This is a, I think it was released one or two months ago from Intel. Top of the line, enthusiast grade, right? The new one from AMD costs less, drops no frames. No frames? Yeah, because it's ah. the difference between a four core and an eight core <laughs> processor. So like OBS is running on four cores and the game is running on four cores, no frames dropped. Oh my goodness. Oh man. I, I, it seems like at some point in the near future I'm gonna have to buy a, a, a desktop. Because, you know, it's, it's such a good investment. Well, now you got you this can... huge ass man cave, you got room to put It's it. fucking ballerific, man. Yeah. It's it's nuts. I, I just went and bought a new futon, right? So I can fucking sleep in here. My wife gets on my nerves. She new comes in here hold, holding a baby and says, you haven't spent time with this newborn in the last, I'll slam the door, let the futon down, and grab my controller. <laughs> That's how you fucking do it. Seems legit to me. You're damn right. <laughs> yeah. good. That checks out. That checks out. Yes, it does. Ziggy Man, Intel won't drop prices. They already did. They already dropped the prices. Like, it's happened. It's already It already happened. <laughs> That's already in the past, my friend. Rip yeah. Intel. <laughs> so long. Oh, yeah, it's a very exciting time to be a gamer. I mean, we got the Switch coming out in days now. We got Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn coming out in two days. Oh, we got Mass That's Effect coming the at the end of the shit. month. We got a new Xbox coming at the end of the year. We got <laughs> Zelda coming out. We got a <laughs> PC price war happening. This is like what, what an amazing fucking year to be a gamer. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. And it's so, only February. Yeah. So let, let me ask you guys a question. I, this was not, you know, a, a questionable person. I met a really nice seller. You know, I, I do a lot of Craigslist and, you know, uh, Facebook marketplaces. And I found the guy who sold me this television brand new. And I went to his actual site and they have, you know, it's an actual store. They have tons of stuff. And he sent me a message um, Friday night. He told me that he's going to have a Nintendo Switch. Um on the day of release, and he wants to know if I'd be interested in it for five hundred bucks. Would Oof. you guys do it? No, God no, no. You know, you know, in forty eight hours, not. in forty eight hours they'll be available. You guys might not know this, but this is how GameStop works. If you don't pick up your pre order within forty eight hours, it goes back to the store, and they can sell it to whoever comes in next. That's exactly how I got my PlayStation VR. And so if I told the guy, I sent him a message that if you don't sell it the day of, you're gonna basically lose your money. So you guys both say no. It's it's unanimous. Yeah. Keep my money. No, right. five hundred dollars. I'm not even sure I want this thing. That's how I kind of feel. I spend my money. On, <laughs> like, I spend my money on my stripper pole. Yeah, I've decided. Yeah, I, that'll I make you money I've back. Decided that I am buying it. All right, it comes out. What is it next Friday? And I um, am buying it. This Friday. But I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. The reason I'm buying it is so that I can have access to this thing to make some YouTube content. Right. I'm going to. You know, check this thing out. I'm going to do like maybe like some impressions. We're going to, you know, I'll be able to talk about it on this show a little bit. Um, on big. Twitch, I might stream some Zelda a little bit. I certainly won't put that shit on YouTube, though. <laughs> yeah. But the re I'll be honest with you. The real reason I'm buying this thing is not because I think it's a good financial decision on my part. Just because, like, I do YouTube video game stuff, and I think it'll be a good addition to have. 
And, and, and you know, and for me, yeah. you're a very informative person. When you when you get a new product or new item, you go through a lot of rig and roll as far as the rollout of how it comes to you, your perception of it, what it's good for, what are the pros and the cons. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you say, especially about the portable, the handheld aspect of this console. That'll really give me a lot more a, a degree of view of whether or not I need to pick it up. Because for me, that's really exciting to have console quality games on the go. Uh, and I'm sure that you're going to be laying in bed with the wife. Rolling over towards your nightstand, playing that Nintendo Switch, and I'm I'm really anxious to see how you feel about it. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna be definitely playing with my Switch. Totally at night in bed. Oh man, Gary's killing it in <laughs> chat. He's making me absolutely die right now. He's so <laughs> goddamn funny. Before Beastly even starts the story, I'm already reaching for nine one one. Well, goddamn it, Gary! Seriously? <laughs> oh, I mean, your stories so can get kind of shady. Yeah, it's a little, you know, we're like, oh, I don't know about that. Look, sometimes shady things happen even when good people are involved. You said he had a a switch and you were something about a stripper pole and something else. like. Yeah, we were here for the show, Robbie. We don't need a recap. (laughs) Yeah. What the hell, Robbie? You're going to make him really go to the cop. He's going to hear it twice. Yeah. All right, Robbie, what have you been playing this week, man? Oh, damn. That was quick. Uh, this week, I have been playing mostly Ubisoft stuff. Uh, For Honor, I've been playing that with friends. Pretty much the same impressions I had before. The network still fucking sucks. It's terrible. Yeah. Like, it really is. There's Did no... you pick that up, Briar? Uh, no, I I want to. I still want to play the game because I enjoyed the shit. I have the same problems that Robbie has with the it's game. It's still super fun, I though. Completely, I completely agree. The network code is shit. I'm not a huge fan of the microtransactions, although I don't really have a big as big a problem with those as Robbie does because you can earn everything in game by playing. For a million but hours. The problem is hours. I just don't have enough hours for that game to earn that stuff. Well, I isn't hear it you. gonna take a, yeah. It'll take like 500 hours to earn. It's like, not even about earning the stuff. It's about I really enjoy the gameplay of that game, and but it's deep and it, it's gonna take some time to get good at you it. Gotta put time into it because people are awesome at that game. Like it's they got fun. really. It's good. a fun game, man. Like, I'm actually really consider like it. buying it. I might I buy it this summer, yesterday. like after after I'm done with like Verizon or Horizon <clears throat> Verizon Horizon, <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn and Zelda and Mass Effect. Maybe oh. I'll get it over the summer to have something to mess around with in the summer. But right now, for me, it's just like if I had bought that, I would have gotten like a week out of it and not really been able to dig deep into it. It's just not. It's not a good time for me to get a new multiplayer game. Yeah, right. and that's what that you, is. It's a multiplayer. By the time game. you pick it up, it'll probably be on sale. Like right now, Rise of the Tomb Raider is thirty bucks on the PlayStation Network, and that's like a week after I bought it for sixty bucks on the PlayStation Ooh. Network. I fucking hate Sony. I hate him. But Robbie, uh, what else have you been playing this week, my friend? Uh, other thing I've been playing that I played a little bit of before is the Ghost Recon Wildlands beta. Mm-hmm. I heard about this. I completely missed it. Have you guys played it? Is it's it still, still going? going on. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. It's going till tomorrow. I don't know what time, but uh, basically it's, you know, it's the same as the closed beta. They allow, opened up a new province. So there's a whole new province to explore. There's lots of new missions. Overall, I think the game is really good. There's a lot of good things about it. I think the world is gorgeous. It is a beautiful open world game. It's like tactical Ghost Recon, almost mixed with GTA because you can drive yeah. around in it, you know, fly helicopters. All that stuff is great. The only thing I'm concerned about is I feel like when I'm playing on my own, I feel like I'm bored sometimes. Like, it just feels like there's not enough interesting stuff to do because the missions are cool. Tackling, you know, just scanning around and trying to take out outposts, it's fun. But, like, this game just feels like it just relies so much on teamwork that playing That's alone, I, I was kind of bored. Robbie. Let me ask you, like, what I hear is that this game is super fun to play with friends. 100%. But it's yeah. a complete miss if you're playing on your own. That's like, exactly how I feel about it. Yeah, it's like when you're playing with friends, the game makes so much sense, and it just works and flows really well. When you're playing alone, all that goes away. It's like it just doesn't feel like the same game to me. So I'm really mixed on it because there are times where I really, really like it, but there are times where I'm just bored. So I don't know. I really just i am kind of on the fence about it. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the original Ghost Recon series. I'm talking about way back in the day on PS2 and the original Xbox it's when you know games like Ghost like Jungle Recon. Storm and stuff came out. This whole idea, the way that the direction they're going with it, I'm not sure I'm going to actually like it. I'm not the biggest fan of games like GTA or you know those type of games. And for me, marrying a game like like Ghost Recon with that type of environment and that type of traversal system might be counterintuitive or counter 
it might counter what I actually loved about what made Ghost Recon, the original Ghost Recon, so special. So I guess I'll have to wait and see, you know, how, how I feel about it. You know, it's a tactical shooter, but now you can, you know, hop in a helicopter and fly around town and, and jump on motorcycles and all this stuff. Yeah, and I, I just don't know. people. Like, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a clip generator, too. Like you're going to for that for years, you're going to see clips based on like ridiculous shit that happens in this game. Yeah, <laughs> for real, because like, you can do really cool shit and like time and stuff with your friends and like being all tactical. Like you can do that, that stuff. Um, but also, it's an open world game, so all that dumb shit is going to happen too. <laughs> oh hell yeah, yeah, that's going to be awesome. So yeah, I just wish there were more interesting things to do in the game because yeah, it's just hard to enjoy it kind of playing by yourself. It's like, eh. like I tried the other night. I'm like, I was just enjoying this so much more with friends. I'm just going to shut it off. So. Well, we gotta find some time, guys, for us to get get, get together and play some games. We you know haven't done anything together. To do, in a I long think is start time. making an appointment, Beastly. It's like we're yeah. just gonna have to do like we're gonna have to figure out a night that works for all three of us, and just like all right, at you know seven p.m. Eastern time, everybody you know meet up and we'll just do it because I think that's the only way it's gonna happen. Because every time yeah. we say yeah, let's get together this week, and then everybody just never gets happens. into their own bullshit, and we never do yeah. it. You know. Well, I'm down. I mean, right, we can so talk why don't about we, after this show, after tonight's show, let's talk about a time that works for us, and then we'll do it. Sounds right? good to me. It'll that only take five awesome. minutes. It'll be a five-minute yeah. conversation. That's cool. That'll work. So Robbie had a, a Ubisoft week. Me, my, my situation this week was kind of starting over on some games that I've played quite a bit of before. I started over in Resident Evil 7 because before I moved, I really got into it. But during the whole moving process and unpacking and doing all this stuff, it took me a couple of weeks before I ever put the VR headset back on. And by the time I did, I didn't really know where the hell I was, what I was doing, or the situation, you know, where I was actually going as far as my objective. And so I completely started over in Resident Evil 7. I did a lot, of, a lot of things differently than I did the first time and made a lot better choices, and I kicked a lot of ass. So I'm really into that as well. And I actually started over with uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. I actually started playing. I have the PC version. Started playing on the PC you know, with the mouse and keyboard and figured that out. But I haven't played that since the day my daughter was born. And so playing on the PS4 uh, is just an overall much better experience because my PS4 Pro is able to do things so much better than this, I guess we would call dated laptop now. And so I've been doing that this week off and on those two games. I actually uploaded some face cam footage of me in, in Resident Evil playing in VR. And I think I'm going to continue that until Horizon comes out. But I think once Horizon comes... Uh, I've heard too much about this game. This game is already pre-ordered, and you guys know yeah. I don't pre-order shit. I, I like to hold on to my money until I know that it's going to be, you know, something special. Uh, but I've heard too much from too many credible, credible people who who have played this game, beat this game, reviewed this game, gave their thoughts on this game. Yeah. And from, basically, from I'm on a media accounts, blackout on this game, so don't. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to say okay. anything. All I've heard is it's incredible. Um, it's quite possibly the best game of this generation, and that's all I'm going to say. And th everything I've seen has led me to that, you know, that conclusion myself. And I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who don't have PS4s who are looking at this game and, you know, drooling, thinking about it. And I'm, I'm telling you now, when that game comes out, I, I might take another day off work. It's that serious. The game looks it's incredible. Big. Yeah, this is going to be a big deal. So I'll be I playing Resident Evil until Horizon comes out, but I'm super excited about that game. One I can't believe day, man, it's so close. Yeah, I can't believe Gor Gorilla, yeah. Gorilla, you know, crafted this kind of world, and from what I understand, this type of story and these characters, uh, you know, when you look at the contrast of what Killzone was, and I know that the earlier Killzone games were lauded by by many as look, you we're know, not in the in the business of selling this fucking game. Oh yeah, well you're right. right. Uh, the game is getting reviewed well. But let's let's we're not slow down by on Sony, the fucking hype guys? train a little bit. Here. I don't think we are. <laughs> hey man, I can't let's help pump it, the man. brakes. Look, Make sure there's some work. We don't want to get going so fast on the hype train that we can't stop this bitch. Look, <laughs> let me just say, man, I've seen a lot of this game, right? Yeah. I haven't seen anything that's going to spoil any stories, but I see the gameplay style and, and the, the gameplay mechanics and the way the game runs and even how it looks in 4K now. It's incredible. And I just can't believe Gorilla did something like this. When you look at games like Killzone Shadowfall, which had just a lackluster kind of campaign, the game looked great. But from from everything I've heard, this is a completely different story. This is more in line with what we see from Naughty Dog. And 
it's got me super excited, Briar. I'm sorry. The train is the fucking brakes are falling off. All right. Yeah, I can't help myself. My train is no brakes either. I'm just. All right. I just want to like. Let's remember the last few games we got super hyped about. No, no, no. You guys about Fallout (laughs) Four. You guys bought that one. Yeah. I I did buy. I bought Fallout Four, and and yeah, it wasn't as great as I thought it was, but it was still great. It it was more of what we we played before. But I did not buy that No Man's shit, Uh and I think this is a completely (laughs) different situation to do that. All right. So here's the deal. Right, I am definitely buying this game. I'm playing it. It's gotten reviewed very well, but I am not gonna say how amazing this game is before I fucking play it. Agreed. You know, like I feel like that's a little irresponsible. Yeah, well, that's not what I was saying. Don't get it twisted, partner. What I said was, from all accounts of everyone who's reviewed it and gave their thoughts after playing it and completing it, and like I said, and that is not true. It's not a unanimous thing. Well, uh, there are people who have issues with it. A lot of people are comparing it. To Far Cry 4, saying it's just like playing a Far Cry 4 in a different world. Like, there are some naysayers out there. It's not a unanimous decision that this game is the greatest of all time. But I did, I heard one reviewer say, uh, the best story I've played since The la- uh, Last of Us. Ooh, shit. Really <laughs> I heard that. Good. I was like, wow, man, that's yeah, too you're far, talking probably, about stuff. But Listen, how are you going to tell me to stop the train and then say some shit like that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's oh, what I'm looking too. forward to this playing it. This is one of the best I'm just saying, since The Last of Us. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, hey, we haven't even played it yet. Let's, like, let's, before we fucking say, Like, our job isn't to sell the game, right? That's not yeah. our job. We're not sponsored by Sony, are we? Guys, I don't no. think so, no? Well, right? look, let me just say this, right? There, there are certain Sponsor pundits us. out there. There are certain pundits out there <laughs> that, that I give a lot of respect to, and Colin Moriarty is one of them. He's a very sound mind. The guy's incredibly intelligent, and for the most part, the games that he's found uh, engaging and exciting have been very a similar. To- ignorant. Yeah. He's kind of ignorant, but I still like him. I Who? don't know, Colin. He kind of frustrates me. Oh, because but you're over. Because you're a liberal. But anyway. Colin Moriarty yeah. is a genius yeah, to me when it comes to too. you know the way that he words his reviews and the things that he likes about games and even the issues he has with them. And when I heard him and Greg Miller actually talk about this game, a part of that conversation really hit me like in the gut. Boom! That this game is going to be incredible. And he's one of those pundits out there that I give a lot of credit to just because of the way that he thinks and the way he puts together his ideas about gaming. And over the last few years, we've seen eye to eye on myriad titles and so that's really one of the biggest reasons i'm excited about this game this guy is i don't think he's going to fluff up a game he's not going to say that the game is you know great when it's horrible even games that you know a lot of people say are fantastic he'll play them and say i thought it was trash and i'll play it and a lot of times i feel the same way he does and that's I love I his honesty he's always honest and i like that a lot sometimes he has really hard opinions on stuff though that i can't always agree with but i usually get where he's coming from i do like colin i always have but Sometimes he's and, a little too hard on things. And, and my, all my I'm wife, saying is that stop the I think we should play the game before we tell about everybody how good it is. I agree That's all Ryan. I'm saying. Yeah. Calm, <laughs> calm your tits, everybody. It'll be Got good. You. Got you. Let's do that. And, and, and uh, we'll definitely be talking about that next week because I want to spend some damn time on that game. Yeah, all right, I'm so, still so excited. I can't help it. Oh, so, so Mr. Wabbit, what have yeah. you been playing this week? So Destiny got updated. There's a brand new meta in Destiny. I've been really having fun playing. It's ignited. It's reignited my love for Destiny PvP. And I've been playing a ton of it. Um, but I, I, I am honestly really looking forward to Horizon Zero Dawn. Like that is for sure. Um, so I'll be streaming that all next week here on the on the Briar Rabbit uh, Twitch channel, and I'll probably do some stuff over on um, YouTube with it too, depending on. I don't know if that's going to be a full playthrough, like a let's play, or if it'll just be like, you know, certain parts that I found entertaining or whatever. I've also been playing a lot of VR, man, and I am super excited about VR. Like, VR is really fun right now. So I've told you guys about Onward. I've been playing more Onward. Onward is a game, um, if you've ever played Search and Destroy in Call of Duty, or if you've ever played like, um, you know, a game like that game mode, it's just fun. And being in there... In VR, with your hands, you know, like holding your gun. I actually was at, uh, um, I was over at uh, Home Depot today, and I was thinking, you know, I should grab a couple of pieces of PV- PVC pipe so I can make a gun, you know, because you can make a gun with PVC pipe that fits through the holes in the Vive controller. You were high, were you, Briar, when you did this? I'm high on fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that answer. 
I'm high on coffee. You just pull it. She pulls the stuff when you're high. So I was just wondering, like, you know, <laughs> just have to ask. Nicely done, though. So nice. what? Uh, it, it'll fit right inside the PVC pipe? Yeah, no. So what, what you do is you build, like, a little kind of gun out of the out of PVC pipe, right, with a shoulder stock. Uh, and then when you bring the gun, up, your your hand up to the gun, you slide the hole on the um, Vive controller. I don't really like how onto you did the piece this, of PVC though, that pipe. Me a bit. So it's like it's holding the stock, and you're holding yeah. this nice stable thing instead of just having your hands like floating out there. Oh, that's, you didn't do that's it. That's really smart. You had a though, good right? idea, and you let you let it drift away, Briar. Is that what you're saying? I, I was also focused on carpet padding, so gotcha. you know, I just had Fucking other shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, you know, carpet padding. <laughs> you know, other you know, there is stuff that has to happen. <laughs> Adult stuff, unfortunately. Now, now you said that um, bringing it back to to the destiny thing, they they've got this new update, and you said it's reignited your love for the PvP portion. Yeah. Of destiny, what has changed, and what's what's gotten you so, so excited? About? Um, what the what they did is they reduced the amount of special ammo that you kind of have in the game. Basically, when you die, you lose all your special ammo. So that doesn't matter if you have a sniper rifle, a fusion rifle, or a shotgun. When you respawn in game, you don't have any special ammo. You have to go find a green crate and pick it up, then reload your gun, and then you have special ammo. Yep. Unless you have a sidearm. If you have a sidearm, they have an intrinsic perk that allows you to kind of hold on to um, ammo when you die. So what it's created is a situation in Destiny where most of the gunfights you get into are with primary weapons. Whereas over the last year, year and a half, most of the, hell, since Destiny came out, really, most of the wet firefights you get into, at least one person on either side of that fight was using a special weapon. Whether that be a shotgun rushing at you or a sniper rifle from afar, uh, it's just changed the economy of the game so that you feel like you're in more, you're in more firefights you're in more gun battles, right? Mm. So a lot of people are upset because um, sidearms, which are like the little pew-pew guns that shoot really <laughs> fast, like a COD sidearm. It's kind of a cheat. Yeah, a little bit. And they, they always have ammo. Um, but the difference between a sidearm and a sniper rifle is that a sniper rifle is a one-shot kill, right? And it happens from across the map. The difference between a sidearm and a shotgun is that a shotgun is a one-shot kill, and it happens you know, by this guy just running at you and killing you. Whereas a sidearm feels like I'm in a gun battle. Even though it's got a t fast time to kill, I feel like I'm in a gun battle. So mm -hmm. Destiny right now, when I play PvP, I feel like I'm in a ton of gun battles. You know, like some of them are drawn out, but there's very few instant deaths. It unless it's a grenade back, yeah. or a super, you know? So it, it has really brought some of the excitement back in that game because for a long time, that game was just dominated with people running around with shotguns as primaries. Yeah. Which, yeah, well, change, I'm going to say this right now, primary weapons should always be your primary weapons. Anyone who uses a shotgun or a sniper rifle, there's a reason they're not called primaries. You're supposed well, everybody to use primaries. Who, they were just playing the primary. meta. I mean, if you, if, why, why wouldn't you use the best weapons in the game if they're, if they're available to you? Right. I'm not, I'm not yeah. throwing shade on anybody who's doing it. I, I'd do it too. When sniper rifles were great, I used sniper rifles. When shotguns were great, I used shotguns. Right now... Sidearms are great, and I'm using sidearms. But the difference <laughs> is that I feel like I'm getting into gun battles as opposed to one, one working shot. the map and working yeah. my movement around to get that one shot. You know, That sounds great, though. It really does. It is. It's, it feels different, and to me, it's ignited a lot of the fun in Destiny, and a lot more primary weapons are viable, it feels like. Let me let me ask you a question. Is this a ubiquitous feeling across the community? Or no. You think, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> are you kidding me? Right. There are always going to be those haters. Oh, no, everybody no. who loves sniper rifles is super pissed right now. Everybody who loves <laughs> shotguns is super pissed right now. Uh, they're all pointing at uh, sidearms saying, like, that. why does that shit get fucking... Ammo in my Keep gun doesn't, you know? No, you it, can't it is not ubiquitously loved. People so are do you fucking think, really upset about it. Do you think that overall this is good or bad for Destiny? I think it's good. I, know. I think it's great. Because think, you're more you're back into the gun fight, but do you think overall, do you think that some people might walk away from it feeling that maybe their sidearm didn't get the same respect as maybe I mean their their secondary weapon didn't get the same respect as maybe the sidearm? I mean, if you get used to playing the game a certain way and, right. and you've done it that way for a long time, then all of a sudden 
something is added that completely negates the way you've been playing, but gives another player, you know, really what they took away from you. That might piss off a lot of people and make them. But walk definitely, away. every any change is going to piss off people. I do think I, what I think they've created here is a more fun meta game. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I do think that's good for Destiny. At the same time, we're at the very end of Destiny's lifespan, right? Yeah, Destiny Two is right around the corner. Anything that they learn at this point, hopefully they'll bring into Destiny 2. I'd love to see a primary focused um, meta at the beginning of Destiny 2, but I don't even know what the weapon types are going to be. I don't know if there are going to be primary specials and, and heavies. Like They might totally change up that system for Destiny 2, so who knows? Right. Um, but right now, the way I see it is it's created a more fun Crucible at, the, at my level of play, and I think that's good for Destiny. Because I'm an average fucking player. At the very top, top level. What's that? At the very top level, they're the most pissed because they don't have shotgun ammo all the time. They feel like it's slowed down. They've, it's slowed down the very top level of play, right? The most competitive guys, the, play, the guys that play in tournaments, destiny tournaments, they're mad because they feel like it's slowed down the play. They can't run around with shotguns and just you know blow everybody out of the water. They have to use primary weapons or, or they have to wait to get special ammo, and they feel like that's slowed down the game. Um. But that's like one percent of one percent of players. Everybody yeah. else is now in this meta where if you get shot once, you have time to duck around a corner. Yeah, you know, and and regain your health and th regroup. And I think that's more fun than just dying instantly all the time. Uh, it'll definitely be a, a better thing for more casual players. Like I used to really play a lot of Destiny, and we're talking way back in the day. And if I was to get back into it now, I'd probably be really agitated every time I went to the Crucible. You know, I look around the corner, and I'm immediately dead. Right. So this type of update would be really good for people who are more casual. And I'm sure there's tons of casual players still enjoying Destiny to this day. So, yeah. all right, so we got a little bit of news for all today's right. episode. We only got eight minutes before. left. How did we get so Let's far? <laughs> what happened, guys? <laughs> No, it always happens when we talk about Destiny. No, I'm just kidding. We had a really uh, long and drawn out uh, opening uh, yeah, portion of the sure. show. That was fun. And, and we, we had a lot of fun talking. So we can go through a couple of these. We'll have to hit them all. Uh, but, Robbie, would you like to get us started? Yeah, for sure. So our first story of the day, this is this pretty much just tells you you need to take a break from time to time because popular Twitch streamer Poshy Brid was found dead after a 24-hour marathon stream for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Now, it's not known entirely how he died. From what's said was that he basically left to go take a smoke, I believe, and then people basically found him dead after that. Uh, the guy was known to be, I believe, an alcoholic. I think he smoked a lot. He might have done drugs, so it could be more than just... You know the fact that he stayed up for 24 hours, but this is exactly why you need to take a break. You need to give your body some rest, especially staying up for that long. It could have been sleep deprivation. Like There is just a long list of things that health problems you can get from things like this. So just you know, be careful is what I have to say. Yeah, treat this as a PSA, not only against just sitting in the same place for 24 hours, which is very bad for you. Get up and, and move. Just take a walk. You. Yeah. Um, there are but also smoking awful for you, <laughs> you Which know, is like let's, let's let's these 24 hour streams scare me. Right. It's like, that's just not a fucking good way to spend 24 hours. No, like, it's, it's not, not healthy. People <laughs> like, aren't still. supposed to stay up for 24 hours at a time. Like I'm sorry, but if not I was made for that, if I was ever do a 24 hour stream, that means I got two partners because after eight hours, I fucking quit. And somebody else is taking over for eight hours, and then the other person will do eight hours. But for you to stay and do that for 24 hours and you and make a wish foundation on top of it, somebody may have been wishing that this guy dropped dead after playing and they got their wish. You got to be careful. Briar, you said pre-show you got you a new chair because you do a lot of streaming. Mm -hmm. And this new chair is better for blood circulation. If you sit in these chairs for too long, you guys don't know the older you get. Those blood clots are very, very... Uh, <laughs> They're terrible. And if you catch one in, in, in your leg, you can get uh, deep vein thrombosis, and that can kill you. You know, it can send it right to your heart, yeah. give you a stroke, you know, brain aneurysm, anything can happen. So you just got to be really careful. And it's unfortunate this happened to this guy. Don't yeah. smoke, guys. It's horrible. Uh, you yeah. know, I used to smoke. I quit smoking in 2010. Um, and it's a really bad thing for you, and it has some very adverse uh, health effects. So if you guys are smoking, try to figure out a way to find a better hobby. Sex is really good. It'll take yeah. your mind off cigarettes. Um, sure. Just, just, just in case you ever start smoking, Robbie, you know how to stop. All right. Thanks. So 
Would you like to continue, Robbie? Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, Xbox games with gold have been announced for the month Ooh, of March. Oh, this is exciting. They include Evolve, because that game's <gasps> been on sale for like years, and Layers of Fear on Xbox One, Borderlands 2, and Heavy Weapon is a backwards compatible titles on 360. I don't know why this is in the news, other than Pretty the fact list. that we all love Evolve. One of the best games yeah, on the just, generation. Is that why and now it's free? You're trolling us with a he has Evolve to be again. trolling. I gotta be honest. I laughed as soon as I saw Evolve. That's why I quoted it. Yeah, because Evolve. <laughs> you know, it's Evolve. It's a meme. Yeah, <laughs> so, thanks a lot. You Robert. can get it free now. Hey, you don't have to spend any money on that shitty game. So you got a free shitty game. Look at it that way. Okay, so we got some Star <laughs> Star Wars news. NASA has announced an exciting discovery this week with the Trappist One Star System, thirty nine light years from Earth. The system contains seven Earth-sized planets, three of which exist in a habitable zone and have the possibility of containing water and or life. And yes. or death. Aliens. Will this be it? No. Maybe. Probably cool. not. It's Absolutely. cool to think though. about, man. Like, it, it's really exciting. What do you guys think? Do you guys think there's life off, off, outside of the planet? I mean, out of ours? Yes, I think there's life out there just somewhere. There's so much out there. It's it's it just seems almost ridiculous to think there isn't. Yeah, oh. I can't imagine there not being. What's that tattoo of? Right, yeah, we can't see it, Brett. It's an extraterrestrial. You can't see him. What's Two eyes. Like Hellraiser. And... A little bit. <laughs> We can't see him Don't really. Listen, guys, never get tattoos when you're drunk or by a person who is drunk. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, pretty know. much like a star system like this, 39 light years, that's close, especially <laughs> for something like this. It's extraordinary. This does not yeah. happen often. So that's what's so cool about this to me. Do you and, understand how light years yeah. work, Robbie? Do you think 30 do you really think 39 light years is close? No, of course not, but in the terms of a star system like this that can inhabit life, that's it's not something that happens often. That's what I'm saying. You understand how warp drive works, PC? It's very close. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Don't throw shit you can't take shit. All right, well, just call me Scotty, okay? Shit, yeah. I know how warp drive works. You know who Zephyr Cocker is? We're space. We're going to connect two space, pieces of space. We are experts. <laughs> In space-time travel continuum, yes. I, I would you heard that I've way. seen every Star Trek movie, so yes, I am an expert. We know all of this. Trust <laughs> us. Yeah. I believe I am, too. All right, so moving on, we got some pretty interesting Nintendo news. The Nintendo Switch Joy-Con controllers are having a lot of connection problems ahead of the, the console's launch this week, seemingly affecting the left Joy-Con controller almost entirely. Journalists from IGN, Polygon, and Kotaku have all claimed the left Joy-Con has serious connectivity issues to the console with constant disconnects, input delays, and overall connectivity being an issue. It is unknown what the, what is causing this issue at this time, and it will be a big problem after the Switch is launched. Shit. Hopefully problem. this is a software update fix. Like a, Hopefully yes. this is you, fixable by software and it'll be it's hardware, day one fix. That's do, bad. Do you, th you think Nintendo knows how to do software updates? I mean, they don't know how to do you know voice <laughs> no. chat. Well, I remember setting up the Wii U on uh, Christmas of, was that 2013? And uh, I knew that I had to take that thing out of the box before Christmas Eve so I could hook it up to the internet so I could update it so that the kids could play it. Yeah. So, yeah, they know about software updates. All right. About six this hours of my, sure. my year, that year, my Christmas Eve was spent watching an update go. Fuck. <laughs> Are you, it took that, really? Yeah, it was forever. I, I the plan was pull it out of the box, hook it up, so that the software update would get done at night. So when the kids opened it in the morning, they, you know, it'd be ready to go. So they what, wouldn't I have mean, to six software hours, update it. What do they do? It turns well, it from Christmas a week to fucking a Eve. Like how many of these Everybody things are getting updated? Going, you know, you're damn right. You're absolutely right. Parents would think ahead. I wouldn't have thought ahead. My kids would have been fucked on Christmas. <laughs> Daddy, we can't play. Shut up and up. Update it. <laughs> All right, so more of, of the Horizon train is uh, on Beastly Thoughts. Horizon Zero Dawn is receiving critical acclaim before its official release on Tuesday, currently sitting at an 88 on Metacritic, with many sites giving the game a 9 out of 10. But Sorry, hey, Briar. can't contain don't, the hype. Don't believe the hype. We gotta play it first. We gotta play it first. We, we'll be back next week to tell you how fucking amazing it is. I'll tell you that next week. All right, Robbie. Hey, all, all I'm saying, man, is. You know, make up your own fucking mind. Yeah, well, 
You can like, my job is not to sell you fucking prior. Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, that's not my job. I thought you were a spokesperson for tell PlayStation, you what I think Briar. about Horizon Zero Dawn. And I, think I haven't you're gonna played be it yet. Let ask you a question, Briar. This is something you don't do very often, but is it a possibility that if Horizon Zero Dawn does tickle your fancy, it's a special game, is it possible Ooh. we could get a Briar Rabbit review of the game? Or is I, something do, you don't I think review you... games all the time, but I do it on this show. Yeah. Right? Well, and I'm I'll tell you what about... I think about a game on this show. But I'm mm -hmm. not a professional game reviewer, like, I, and I don't really pretend to be, like, because I think I think you're just a professional. Period, Briar. I, I, if you wanted to be work at Disney as uh, Mickey Mouse, I think you'd be the best one. Dude, just, I would amazing. like that job. It's gotta be hot though. Imagine being in that fucking Mickey suit. <laughs> Briar, fucking Briar, Disneyland yeah, all day. Briar, it would be oh, hot oh, anyway. Oh, you know how many milfs? Yeah. Milfs run up to Mickey Mouse. You got those big mittens. You can put them anywhere, and no one's going to question you. <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah, you go from a break. child thing like Mickey Mouse to oh, milfs, those big tits. You know, you got those big, those I big didn't mitts. say big tits. You must be thinking tits. about big tits up there in Canada. Sorry. All right. <laughs> now you're getting into body parts and stuff. All right. Um, continuing on, the unannounced Shadow of Mordor sequel has leaked from a target listing that has since been taken down. It will be called Middle Earth Shadow of War and has a release date of August 22nd, 2017. It is being developed once again by Monolith Productions. Hell yes. Hell yes. Hell the yes. Eye of Sauron sees you. Yes. Anybody here Sorry. actually finish the first one? I no, barely I played I, it. I, I just excited. swear to you. <laughs> Why are you listen. so excited? I don't know. It's, I just am. Be a real gamer, Robbie. Shadow like Mordor like looks dope to me. That's why. Like, I just, well, I really does. want to play the second one. That's one of the few games yeah. I put on my pro. It looks incredible. I didn't get a chance get to beat my wife. Did that get a pro update? Yes, it did, bro. It did. It it's, did. Yeah, it's in 4K. Uh, you need to check it out. That's the only reason I put it on there. But my wife's upset that I haven't beat it because I probably put an hour into gameplay. She told me it's one of the best experiences she had on the PS4. She really, really liked that game. Gary's still, she, still reaching for 911. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Gary, calm down. Listen, man. You got to keep it real, Gary. I just that tell game, it like it is. So I, I played a little bit of that game, and it had some really cool ideas, but I got so bored with it so fast. Like, I bounced off that game really quick. I bet I put five, ten hours into it. I played a couple hours of it, and I don't know. There was something about the combat that didn't. I found it no, was the kind combat's of boring, amazing. Too. It's like that. Don't give me that shit. Yeah, it, no, it was, but it combat, didn't feel exciting. Isn't the Batman combat dull, like a bit like, overused at this point? Like, that's yeah. been used. Batman came out, and it was really fresh and cool. And then every fucking three third-person game after Batman used that like, combat which ones? system. Name some. I don't know any that used it besides that game. Shadow of Mordor? All I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't have a recall It's the like only that. one. No, it's not. No, no it's, it's not. That's, it. that's the no. only one I can remember, Briar. And plus, you know, I don't play everything, but... Of course, all the Batmans had it, and if it, it, it was perfectly at home there. But Shadows of Mordor is the only game that I played that really took that style and, and kind of... Speaking of so that. My, and, my problem, I think, with that game is that I just felt it was repetitive. Like, I just did the same thing over and over again, right? As I went, you know, I found an outpost. I, you know, I figured out a way to, like, infiltrate the outpost, you know, find the main guy. I killed 100 dudes, and then I killed the main guy. Yeah, I played it for a day or two. I was like, I'm good. This is fun. But... <laughs> he made the game sound boring uh, as fuck. <laughs> but I, I really liked, cool I liked that it, nemesis though. system. That was something I really expected to see in other games. How you could, yeah. like, you know, take out, like, a boss, and you'd get to see, like, the power structure of the enemies kind of change, and, like, new guys would step into place. And if they, if they beat you, then they'd get promoted, right? So your end boss... May be like this guy who's already beaten you earlier in the game, which I thought was a really cool system. I've never that seen it in another so, game. So cool. And no one has yeah. ever used it again, and that's really that's kind of a tragedy in gaming because it was such so ahead of its time. And I mean, this game came out what 2014, and yep. no one has used it since. It's kind of just gone dormant. Who knows? All right, so continuing on, Mass Effect Andromeda has gone gold. The game has officially finished development and will be available on March 21st for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Yeah, going baby. gold, does that mean anything anymore? Is that newsworthy event? Because I feel like going gold is just like a, it's a press release that means yeah. we're not actually done working on the game, but the game is definitely coming out when we said it's going to come out. But we're going to still work on the game because there's going to be a three gigabyte day one patch. patch. Yeah. <laughs> so is yeah. this really newsworthy yeah. event anymore? I, I think over time, over the Sorry. next you know, year or so. It used to be like time. the big thing, right? It's like, oh, it went gold. You know, that is because whatever that was on that disc was basically the final what version you got. of the game. 
right? Or <laughs> in a not on a, more. No, certainly not. No, and it shouldn't be. I mean, like all the stuff that comes after the release of a game can really add huge and amazing things to a game. Mm-hmm. Um, it does suck that like if you buy a game before you play it, you have to download like ten gigabytes of fucking bullshit. <laughs> Yeah. You're so excited to play that game. And you put it in your PlayStation, you're like, oh, here we go. Oh, okay, nope. you gotta install it. Nope. Oh, it's not installed. Yeah, oh, here, oh, here we, go. we go. This is the time. Oh, 10 <laughs> gigabytes. Oh shit. Two how hours. much how long is that gonna take on my 10 megabyte per second download? <laughs> <laughs> you playing that shit tomorrow. 42 hours! <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh god and and uh a kind of a foresight the next batman game has been leaked thanks to a reddit posting from a wb montreal employee claiming the game will be called batman arkham insurgency and it will be set around three years after the events of arkham origins it will be developed once again by wb montreal on ps4 uh, xbox one and pc the same studio behind arkham origins are and you an announced a press is- release we're not done just hold on just yeah, Brian, you done fucked it up. Should we, should we source this article? Because this are we plagiarizing right now? Just no. Let him finish. Shh, no, it's okay. I'm just oh, listen, Briar. I'm trying to be like you. I'm trying to be professional. I'm trying I'm to make this sound. Like, we're gonna be professional. I'm just show. a little no curious talk, if we're okay? just like reading we're somebody else's that. article out loud and not not sourcing the article. No, I'm not reading. This is not the article. <laughs> All right. This is not look at our look at our goddamn notes. You done fucked it all up. Can we finish the story, please? I'm all out of coffee. Uh, God damn it. I'm it just curious. Developed. I just want to make sure that we're not like, you know. See, Robbie, he's, he's, Robbie, he's trying you now, Robbie, because you you get our notes together. He's Briar, fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> it will be developed once again by WB Montreal for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, the same studio behind Arkham Origins, and an announcement is coming on March 8th. The rumored release is November 2017, and that's not a press release. Mm. Briar doesn't know what to say. He's like, are we in trouble? What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Briar, don't question my sources. My sources are 100% I just, confirmed I'm just and asking because it sounded like it was right. a press release the way he was always saying it. Right. <laughs> Fuck, he I t- no, Briar. I typed it. That was my own words, though. Okay. Yeah. All right, words. good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I was just asking. I was just asking. I'm a you know professional, what, okay? Yeah. I take time. All right. You might, you I appreciate because, the concern, Briar. though. Just because okay. he's 13 doesn't mean he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Okay, Obviously, I'm, all, I'm just quitting the show now. I'm <laughs> I'm out, fuck you guys! <laughs> fuck you guys. Listen, this I'm shit not 13, not, I'm 14 this, for your information. I'm sorry. First hair on ball. I'm Listen, 14 and a half. <laughs> yeah. This, this show would not exist in the, the capacity that it does without the hard work no, and diligence of Bobby Skull. He's that an amazing correct. Part of the show, and we thank you so much for all the hard work you put into it, Robbie. We oh. wouldn't be able to do this without. I'm just being totally honest. We wouldn't be able to do it without you, and we're very yeah, appreciative. Treating me like shit, and now you're like you're such an important part of this show. We love you. You gotta butter you up. After I don't know how to feel. Dis. You gotta butter you up after the dis. Like my wife, she'll see me eat some food. She's like, "I'm sorry, mm, baby. That- I'm a changed man. It'll never happen again." <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> thanks. thanks. Listen, check it out. I'm learning from my wife. Uh. Okay? I'll get okay. done eating dinner, and then I'll look over and see my wife looking at me smiling, and I'll go, what? And she'll say, that looked delicious. I'll go, it was. I buttered your buns for you. No. And I'll say, say, are you talking shit about me? And she'll say, you're so handsome. And I'll go, thanks. That's what <laughs> we- <laughs> After the diss, you got to come back and make a person feel good about themselves. Oh. So we love you, Robbie. And it has nothing to do with your age, because puberty is fast approaching and we already love your ability to write your own stories without plagiarizing, citing articles. You're an, an, an amazing part of the show, and we thank you. I for feel it. like I need to start my own abuse hotline here. This is just too much. <laughs> too fucking much. Call 1-800-ROBBIE if you're feeling bad at home. Your mom talking shit about you again? Is your dad Stop telling you abuse. that you'll never amount to anything? Call 1-800-ROBBIE today and speak to one of our accredited counselors. All right, what's that? What else we got? That's oh, it, Briar. That's it. We fucking That's killed all it. the news? We fucking killed it. We killed yes, it. Yes, we did. That's why I'm bullshit now, because we did that shit. Ah, we did a great job. Don't worry, though. I forgive you guys. It's okay. This one You're... time. Do it again. And it'll be next again. week. All right. Thank you for your forgiveness. Forgiveness. 
<laughs> hey, but Briar, you know he lives in Canada. He's going to forgive us every time. And look, <laughs> I oh, yeah. Every yeah, time. That's right. Yeah. Every I'm surprised he hasn't time. apologized yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again with the stereotypes. <laughs> hey, man. Certain times, they're absolutely true. Like, I love chicken and watermelon. If they had a chicken watermelon smoothie, I'd probably drink it. I also love chicken watermelon. Hey. Would that even taste like? <laughs> I would not eat a chicken watermelon smoothie, though. That sounds fucking gross. <laughs> I'd try it if someone paid me, maybe. Like, What's that? I said I'd try it if someone paid me to, but... Mm. Hey, uh, I gotta send a big shout out to Gary for keeping everybody rolling in the comments. Yeah. We love you, man. You're I very love, special. Gary. You're a very special guy, and you mean a lot to us. You're I want to definitely get, remember we were gonna do the uh, werewolves within thing with Gary. I still want to do that. I, Briar, I'm waiting on you, man. Just tell I, me the fucking day. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm here too. See, the phone right. works both ways, beastly. I know, but <laughs> hey, I, I remember the last time we were supposed to play. I called you on my phone. You said, "Hey, well, uh, today's." Not really the best day, Beastly. I got my own shit going on. And that was the end of the conversation. Was so I'm letting sick? you know now. I think I was sick. Sick of playing with me. <laughs> sick of talking to you in general. <laughs> you got that right. All right, guys. I think that's going to wrap up the show. Before before we break up, <laughs> we got to end this show. Our friendship is just like on a very friendship thin over. line right now. Unfollowed. Well, we'll come, Unfollowed. We'll, we'll come back in a few years and we'll go on tour with uh, NSYNC and uh, Backstreet I'm unsubbing from your channel, Brian. I, I want my enough. dick pics back, Robbie. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, I didn't even know I sent those. I totally forgot about those. Yeah, let I'm, me happy, I, I'm happy you didn't CC me on those uh, transactions, my friend. <laughs> Hopefully those didn't uh, manage to get out anywhere. That would be uh, very embarrassing. I love you, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Someone in the chat said it's like the Beatles breaking up. <laughs> it would be. Hopefully not. All that's right, guys. That's going to wrap this show up. We will be back next week at 6 p.m. Eastern time to hear more about Beastly's TV, more about Canadian bacon, and more Isn't about that- Destiny. <laughs> check, out, check out this magic remote, man. It's Thank so you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. What did I just say? Bye guys. I'm at the